Hi there. Now, in an earlier video, what I showed you was this standard integral here, where we had the integral of 1 all divided by the square root of a squared minus x squared with respect to x, where a was a constant. And the result was the inverse sine, or some people call it arc sine, of x over a, plus a constant of integration. Now what I want to show you in this video though is how we work with limits when it comes to this type of integral. You've got to take care. You've got to take care because you must be familiar with the graph of the inverse sine of x. If you're unsure of this, do go back and check the videos on this. But basically it was a graph looking like this where the domain went from minus 1 to 1 and the range went from minus pi upon 2 to pi upon 2. So to demonstrate the particular points about using limits, I've got two examples here, which, as I say, hopefully should uh, give you some idea of how to work with this. In this first one, we've got the integral of 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared with respect to x going between x equals minus a half to x equals 1. And you can see straight away that a squared would have to be the 1, so a would be 1. So using this result here, what it's going to be is equal to the inverse sine of x divided by 1. Just leave it as x. And then this is between the limits then of minus a half to 1. So when we substitute our values in, what we've got here is taking 1 first of all, it's obviously going to be the inverse sine of 1 minus then the inverse sine of minus a half. Now when it comes to working out these particular values, they must fall within this range from minus pi upon 2 to pi upon 2. So do use the graph to help you determine what those values are going to be. So the inverse sine of 1, well that's going to be pi upon 2. So you've got pi upon 2 there, and then minus the inverse sine of minus a half. And that's got to be in this range here, between minus pi upon 2 to naught. Well, if you work that out, remember you should be in radians mode, you will find you get minus pi upon 6. So that's minus pi upon 6. So pi upon 2 minus minus pi upon 6 gives you 4 pi upon 6, and that reduces down, if you cancel, top and bottom by 2 to 2 pi over 3. And there's your answer. Now, we've got this one here, the integral from minus 3 quarters to 3 quarters of 1 divided by the root of 9 minus 16x squared, integrated with respect to x. Now, you might like to have a go at this one. If you do, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can either fast forward just to check your final answer, or I'll take you slowly through the method. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, with something like this, as I showed you in the earlier tutorials, when you've got a number in front of x squared other than minus 1, as we have here, you've got to pull this out in front of a bracket. So we can think of this then as the integral still from minus 3 quarters to 3 quarters. Just squeeze that in there. And then I can think of putting a 1 there, say, and this is all divided by the square root then. And we pull the 16 out in front of a bracket. So you get 16 bracket. And in the bracket, you'd put 9 sixteenths minus x squared. OK? And then we integrate all of this with respect to x. Now, 
The square root of 16 is 4, so I can then think of pulling 1 over 4 out the front of the integral, in other words, a quarter. So we've got quarter, and then we've got the integral going from minus 3 quarters to 3 quarters then, of 1, all divided by the root of, now, 9 sixteenths can be thought of as 3 quarters all squared, so we've got 3 quarters all squared there, and then minus the x squared, and that's integrated with respect to x. So using the result that we've got over here, this will be equal to 1 quarter, and then we've got the inverse sign of x divided by a, a being 3 quarters. So if we do x divided by 3 quarters, that's going to end up as 4x over 3. And then this will be between the limits of minus 3 quarters to 3 quarters. So if we put our values through here, let's just put this quarter out the front here, put a big square bracket up here, we've got the inverse sign then of 4 thirds times 3 quarters. That's going to be the inverse sign of 1. And then from this, we subtract. And if we put minus 3 quarters in here, we end up with negative 1. So we've got minus the inverse sign of negative 1. And what does this reduce down to? Well, we've got 1 quarter multiplied with well, the inverse sign of 1 is going to be pi upon 2. Then from this, we subtract the inverse sign of minus 1, which is minus pi upon 2. So tidying this up, we've got pi upon 2 plus another pi upon 2, which is pi. Quarter times pi is just going to be a quarter pi, or pi divided by Four. Okay, so I hope it's given you some idea then on how we go about handling this type of integral when we've got limits. Just make sure the values you pick for the inverse sign are between minus pi upon 2 and pi upon 2. Okay.